the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's be on our feet. Our God is a faithful God. In the course of the first service, we're talking about the faithfulness of God over our lives. So this morning, as you've come to commune with the King of Glory, I want you to appreciate him for his faithfulness in your life. His divine protection, keeping you, keeping your family. It's not by our power, it's not by our might. It's by the Spirit of the Lord. It's by his special favor, his love, that we wake up every morning and we see a new day. Say, so Father, I thank you for keeping me alive. I thank you for your loving kindness. I thank you for every sin and unseen battle, Lord God. I thank you for your provision. I thank you for the good health that you have given to me. I thank you for where I am in this time, in this season, because you know why. Say, so, Father, I bless you. I thank you, Lord. The whole world is full of multitude of people. We are here now. It's morning time. For some people, they are about to go to sleep. Some people, it's midnight. Some people are at peace and some people are not at peace. But God in his infinite mercies has decided to show his mercy over you and your family. Say, Father, I thank you, Lord. I appreciate you, King of glory. I'm not taking it for granted, Lord. The Bible says Jesus asked the leper, the one man that came back after he has healed the ten of them. He said, what about the nine? Ten of you received healings here. Well, what about that nine? And you are that one today that I've come and said, Father, I thank you. I bless you. I appreciate you. You are that one that is not moved by what you see, but you're moved by the love of God. You're moved by the word of God. Say, Father, thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you. Despite everything that has happened to you, the things you've gained, the things you've lost, the time of disappointment, the time of appointment, the time when you've been down by yourself, nobody's there, and the time when God has surrounded you with people. Say, Father, I thank you. I appreciate you, Lord. Father, Lord God, this morning, we want to join the host of heaven to worship you, to exalt you, to lift up your name, because that is all that matters. It's not all about the noise. It's not all about, you know, the fashion. It's just about you, God, alone you God alone because there is no like you and the Bible says you've created us in your own image so that we can do what we can worship you and this morning we are here to worship you Lord God lift up your hands and just begin to bless the name of the Lord as we start the service in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost yes we bless you Lord we bless you Lord worship God worship God Hallelujah. Cast in crown, lift in hands, bowing heart is all we've come to do. Casting crown, lifting hands, bowing up is all we've come to. Casting crown, casting crown, lifting hands, lifting hands, bowing up, bowing up is all. Casting crown, casting crown, lifting hands, lifting hands, bowing heart, bowing heart. He's all, he's all we've come to do. Casting crown, casting crown, lifting hands.
is an honor just to stand before holy God Almighty is a privilege. of the universe.
into your declaration. Tell the Lord. I want you to tell him in your own word. Tell him that you love him forever. Tell him that you worship him. Love you forever because this God is too good. 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 Oh, I will worship. I will worship you forever. Thank you, Lord. Father, that is our declaration. Lord, that is our covenant with you. That we will love you forever. We will worship you forever. We will worship you till eternity. This is our declaration, Lord. Help us to fulfill this. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you so very much, choir. May the Lord bless you and lift you higher in Jesus' name. Praise God. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Yeah, um, I'm excited because of what God is doing and also because of what He intends to do. I'm so happy. If I tell you that God wants to do great things in your life, will you be happy? Will you be excited? That's exactly what I'm telling you. The Lord wants to do a great thing in your life. The Lord wants to lift you from where you used to be to where he wants you to be. The Lord wants you to lift you to the point that you fulfill your destiny. You fulfill the reason why he called you here on earth. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Okay. In order to fulfill the destiny of our lives, we have to align ourselves with the will of God for our lives. Otherwise, we find ourselves struggling because we wanted to go this way. But you're struggling. I want to go this way. So you continue to struggle. I pray for you that struggle will end in Jesus' name. And for you to align yourself in the will of God, to help us to align ourselves in the will of God, we want to institute a culture that will please God, that will help us to align ourselves in the will of God. And that is the culture that I've... Uh, Published, I'll put it everywhere so that you can see it. And uh, from what we have written, the first culture is culture of holiness. The second culture is love and kindness. And the third culture is culture of building people or capacity building. And the last culture is culture of soul winning. And I promise that I will discuss this culture each Sunday. Last Sunday we talked about the culture of holiness. Without going back into what I said last week, I just wanted to know that when you choose to live holy, you're not living holy for God. When you live holy, it doesn't make him holier. It doesn't make him richer. It doesn't make him bigger. But when you choose to live holy, it is for yourself. Praise God. Because when you choose to live holy, holiness becomes your defense. Holiness attracts the presence of God. Holiness ensures that you're victorious. Nobody will fight you and win. Take it from me. If you choose to live holy, 
nobody, including if the devil multiply himself into millions and they come to fight you, they will never win. Praise the Lord. That is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. The Bible says, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you, you will refute. The Bible said, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. In other words, when you are living holy, holy life, no matter the arrow they throw on you, it will not succeed. Anybody that wants to block you from fulfilling your destiny, God will remove the person. It's not a prayer. I'm telling you that's how it is. That is exactly how it is. If you are living a holy life and somebody make up his mind to block you so that you will not fulfill the will of God concerning your life, the Lord will take the person away. How he takes him away, I don't know, but he does. Praise God. So you're not living a holy life for God. You're living a holy life for yourself. There's great benefit in living a holy life. Praise the Lord. When you begin, to, when you're living a holy life, you become untouchable. The devil cannot touch you because you're living a holy life. When you're living a holy life, you find that, that the, the devil will be afraid of you. Whenever he hears your name, he wants to run away. And that is the truth. It doesn't matter if you are as small as this or as big as that. No. What in the spiritual realm, what matters is how holy you're living. Praise the Lord. How holy you're living is what matters. For those that are living a holy life, you find out that God surrounds them with fire day and night. Not just on the day. Not just in the night. But day and night, you're surrounded with fire. But anybody that living an immoral life, unholy life, Guess who surrounds him? The devil. The demon surrounds you. You become just a bread in the hand of the devil. He can do you anything. That's why the people of the kingdom of darkness, when they point at you and say, this, this will happen to you. Sorry, it's not you. <laughs> if they point to somebody and say, this, this will happen to you, it will happen to them because they're not living holy. Praise the Lord. But if you're living holy life, if they point to you, you say, I paralyze that hand in Jesus' name. And to be paralyzed, praise the Lord, because you're living a holy life. I pray for you that beginning from today, you choose to live holy life. Praise the Lord. So today I want to talk about love and kindness, love and kindness. Um, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter four, chapter six, sorry, Deuteronomy chapter six, four to five. Deuteronomy chapter six, four to five. It says, "Hear, O Israel." The Lord our God is one to chapter 22, verse 37. It said, the Bible said, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is, this is the first and great commandment. Praise the Lord. This is the first thing God looks for. That is the first commandment. If you don't do this, every other thing you're doing will not be counted for. Jesus is telling us that if you don't love God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your soul, no other thing could be counted 
You say, that is the first commandment. If you obey this, every other thing will follow. Praise the Lord. I pray for you that you begin to abide by this commandment in Jesus' name. Because that's the commandment that makes way for every other thing. Unfortunately, almost everybody, including non-Christians, they will tell you, I love God. But what is love? How do you know you love? How do you know you love? What is love? How do you know you actually love God? Or how do you know that you love somebody? Is it just in your heart? I love you in my heart. That's all. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, He did what? He gave. Action follows love. Any love without an action is not love. The main ingredient for love is sacrifice. The main ingredient for love is what? Sacrifice. Somebody loves you so much. And you are going to, your car broke down here. Meanwhile, you're going to city. That's where you live. And the person is living in Amadeo. He said, please, can you take me to um, the city? He said, no, that's not the way I'm going. I'm going to Amadeo. Does that show love? <laughs> love sacrifices. Although I'm going to Amadeo, I'm going to take you to city. That's demonstration of love. Praise the Lord. Each time you cannot sacrifice, it shows that you do not love. And that's exactly what is applicable between you and God. Can you sacrifice? If you cannot, then you don't love him. Even though you can shout it all you want. You can shout it all you want. The Bible say that you should love God with all your heart. With all your soul. With all your might. Let me tell you, if you love God, not with all your soul, not with all your might, maybe you love him 60% of your might, he will not accept it. If you love him 80% of your soul, he will not accept it. If you love him 90% of your heart, he will not accept it. What does he accept? All, 100%. I want you to think about it. Do you love God? Um, like I said, love is something that is without condition. When you love, it's without condition. But if there's a condition for you to love, it's not condition. It's not love. Praise the Lord. It's transactional. It becomes transactional. If you do this, then I will do this. That's a transactional relationship. It's not love. Many times, what we have with God it's transactional, not love. It's transactional relationship, not love relationship. Many times. 
May I ask you one question? I don't want you to answer me. You're going to answer yourself. Why are you here this morning? I want you to think deep, 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 deep. Why are you here this morning? Deep. Think deep. Why are you here this morning? The reason why you're here is not wrong. No, it's not wrong. Whatever reason you're here, it's not wrong. And God is interested in that reason. But what, what God wants is a loving relationship. What I'm talking about, love for God first, before love for humanity, is that if you don't love God, your love for humanity is not genuine. It is the love that f- flows from God that you can give to others. But if you don't love God, you find out that the reason why you may love somebody or you may say you love somebody is because you want to get something out of the person. There's something you want to get. Praise the Lord. Okay. I know you've answered the question why you're here. And I say it's not wrong. Now, when you look at why you're here, for majority of you, you find out that the reason why you're here is because of yourself. I want God to answer my prayer. I want God to do this for me. I want God to do that for me. That's why you're here. Praise the Lord. But I want you to turn it around. I'm here because I love God. That is one that satisfies. If you begin to do everything you are doing to go, for God because you love him, it changes everything. It changes everything. Let's take for instance, I'm here for God to answer my prayer. You know, God answering prayer, he can answer it like this. He can answer it one minute to the end of the service. So why should I stay here from the beginning? Praise the Lord. I don't need to be here from the beginning before God answers my prayer. I will come towards the ending and God will answer my prayer. Praise God. But if you say, I'm going to church because I love God, that will even wake you up. I want to prove to God that I love him. I want to prove to him that I love him. I want to do everything so that he will know that I love him. It changes everything. It changes the game. It will make you to wake up very early. I want to come early just to prove to God that I love him. Praise the Lord. A number of people, you give God. We give. Why? Many a times... Because the Bible says, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, praise down, shaking together. Shall men give unto your soul. Praise God. It's good. But you find that you're giving because of you. You're giving because you want to receive bigger one. Praise the Lord. So it's not actually because you love God. It's because you want bigger. Which actually... If you go to casino, you can get the same thing. Don't need to get it here. You go to casino, some people put a little bit of money and they win big. Praise the Lord. And God is not casino. Praise God. But if you want to give and say, God, I want to prove to you that I love you. It changes everything. My giving is to show you that I love you. My service is to show you that I love you. It changes everything. You begin to see that you can sacrifice because you love God. The truth is that most of us think we love God, but we actually love ourselves. If you look at most of the things you're doing, it's because of you, not because of him. 
check all the things you're doing is actually because of you, not because of him. But I want you to change that mentality. God wants you to love him with all your heart. If you love him with all your heart, those things you, those things you care for, God will do it effortlessly. He don't need to ask. He will do it. Praise the Lord. Imagine, you know, okay, let me say, you, go, you travel back to your village and, you know, you came back with some money and some people came around and God opened your eyes. This one came because you want money from me. This one came because he want money from me. He had been told, the man is generous, he gives money. So, so you see him, you say, I want to collect my own. That's what God shows you. He's saying, I want to come and collect my own. And then you see another person, oh, I love this man. I come just because I love him. And I can do anything for him. Which one will you draw closer to yourself? Huh? The one that loves you. The one that is not here to just collect his own. Praise the Lord. So when we look at ourselves, we're coming to the house of God. Each of us, we're coming to collect our own. We're coming to collect our own. <laughs> because we know God is generous. We're coming to collect our own. Praise the Lord. Many people have told you, pray. Go to church and go and say your prayer. He does. And so for some of us, that's why we're here. But I wanted to turn it around. If you are only coming for God answering your prayer, it's not enough. I want you to, everything you are doing for God, let it be that you love him. Let it be because you love him. Once that mentality, once you begin to have that mentality, everything in your life will change. The way you serve him will change. The way you see him will change. You will you begin to sacrifice for him. You will not say, I want to sleep more. You will not say, I want to do this. You will sacrifice for him, because love sacrifices. Praise the Lord. You will not say, I'm tired, that's why I can't do this. You see, that is the time God is saying, do you really love me? When you're tired, you say, God, please, let me sleep, God. Love sacrifices. If you cannot sacrifice to God, you don't really love him. Praise the Lord. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5, the Bible says, And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. First and foremost, they gave themselves to the Lord before any other thing. God accepted them. Let me tell you something. If you read the Bible very well, God does not just accept your service or your money or whatever you have to do. What does God accept first? The person. He accepts you first. He might bring Two billion or how much it is you bring to him. But if he doesn't accept you, he cannot accept that. If you look at the Cain and Abel, even though the Bible said that God accepted Abel first. He accepted him. And then he accepted his offering. So the, the true way for God to accept your service is for him to accept you. 
The only way for him to accept you is for, him to, for you to love him. The only way you can show that you love him is that you are able to sacrifice for him. You're able to sacrifice. Love, anything without sacrifice is not love. Anything without sacrifice is not love. Praise the Lord. You find out that in the case of Solomon, the Bible says, and Solomon loved the Lord. That's where he started. And Solomon loved the Lord. First Kings chapter 3 from verse 3. He said, and Solomon loved the Lord. It's because he loved the Lord that he now gave a bond offering. Praise the Lord. First Kings chapter 3, 3 to 5. It says, and Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of David, his father, only he sacrificed and born incense in the, in the high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand born offering did Solomon offer unto that altar. Praise the Lord. What motivated him to sacrifice? Huh? What motivated him? He loved the Lord. You know, some, some preachers will tell you, give God 10,000 and he will give you 100,000. Give God $100, uh, $100 and he will give you 1,000. What's motivating you to give? <laughs> because you want to. Not because you love him. Praise the Lord. Such. I don't know. I'm not God, but I don't think all of, the, all of that are always accepted. I'm not sure they're always accepted. Because what God looks for is, do you love me? Is you he wants, not really your money. Do you love me? It's out of the love you have for him that you give him. Praise the Lord. And when Solomon did that, in verse 5, the Lord now appeared to Solomon in the dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. God appeared to him because we gave him out of love. And God now appeared to him. When God appeared to him, do you know what Solomon said? If you look at verse 6 and 7, the Bible says, And Solomon said, Thou hast shewed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as the, he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Praise God. You can see the heart of gratitude that he came with to give God. He didn't come to say, God, I'm going to sacrifice a thousand bond offering because you're going to give me 200,000 after I've done that. No. But the reason why he came is because he loved the Lord. He came because of the heart of gratitude. He looked back and saw all the things that God had done for him. And said, no, I must thank him. And then he went to thank him. Praise the Lord. That is why he didn't start with any, any need. He started with telling him, you love, uh, thank you for all you've been doing. But because God told him, ask, he now said, God... If it's okay with you, give me wisdom. Praise the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord. That's the first commandment. Do you love God? 
Do you love God? Are you serving him only for what you can get? Or to show him that you love him? Turn your service around. Let it be, Lord, I want, it, I want to use it to show that I love you. If you do that, it will change everything. If you are doing everything you are doing just because you want to show him that you love him, it will change the whole dynamics. Praise the Lord. If you look at Luke chapter 1, 5 to 7, you see there Zacharias and Elizabeth, they were serving the Lord with all their hearts. And I'm sure they started even since when they got married. And they were serving the Lord, expecting a child. And the time of women passed. But they didn't stop. Why were they serving him? So why were they serving him? Because they love the Lord. Even after they are very old, they were still serving him. They were still going and they were barren. And they were going. Every morning they go. But many people, they, they are serving the Lord just because of what they will get. And when the time they give to the Lord comes and they didn't give, they didn't receive. Say, no, well, I'm wasting my time. And some other people that are serving the Lord for what they will get. Most of the time, when they get it, they leave. If you look back in this church, you will see some of those people. I know a lot of them. They pray all the time. Most of them pray here all the time. When people are not here, they come and pray in the altar. They come in the church every Sunday. So some of them. The moment they get what they want, they're out. They pray all the time. Once they get what they want to say, sister, come, let's pray. For what? Praise the Lord. <laughs> for what? I'm no longer in that state. I've gotten what I want. What am I praying for? But if you are serving him because you love him, you find out that whether you get what you are asking for, you do not get what you are asking for, it doesn't change you. You still remain the same. You still serve him the same way. But those that serve the Lord because they love him, I want you to know, that you will never lose your reward. Praise the Lord. So the first thing is for you to fulfill that first um, commandment, which is to love the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord. And he gave a bond sacrifice, a thousand bond sacrifice. What about you? I'm not preaching about giving. I'm not asking you to give. No, that's not what I'm saying. What will, what, what will it be recorded in heaven? That you love the Lord. This is what you are doing. And so, so, so love the Lord. What Can you tell God, because I love you, this is what I will be doing? Whether somebody is there or not there, this is what I will do. When you are serving God because you love him, people will not change you. Situations will not change you. You will do it because I just want to show God that I love him. Whether people come or not, I will do it because I love him. God is asking you this day, how can you show me that you love me? How can you show him that you love him? I want you to think about it. That's the first thing. 
The second part of the message, um, I'm not going to go too far on it because, um, because of time. But the point I'm trying to make is that if you don't love the Lord, your love for fellow human being will not be genuine. If you don't love the Lord, your love for fellow human being can never be genuine. Praise the Lord. You know what? God created us. God created human beings to be loved. And created material things like money and every other thing to be used. Guess what? Human beings love material things and they use human beings. Praise the Lord. They love material things. They love money. And they use money, they use human beings to get what they love. That's what's happening. Check in your office. You're just, you're just a number to make money for them. Anytime they can throw you up, they use human beings. And they, that's what human beings generally do. But God is calling you today to love your fellow human beings. Love God first and love your fellow human beings. If you look at Colossians chapter 3, 12 to 15, the Bible says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Praise God. This is the culture we want to establish here. The culture of loving one another, the culture of showing kindness, the culture of forgiving one another, the culture of humility, the culture of bearing one another's body, the culture that you will not see somebody suffering or somebody going through the hardship and you ignore the person. That's the culture we want to build here. We want to build a culture of love and kindness in this place. Last time we were meeting, I mean, it's last Sunday, I guess, and somebody was asking, why is it that people come and they don't stay? They come and they don't stay because the when they come, the attitude you give to them, they ask themselves, why am I here? Sometimes you don't even talk to them. The, the person asks themselves, why am I here? We don't value people. Praise the Lord. I want you to make up your mind, resolve it in your heart, that beginning from today, you're going to value people. You're going to welcome everybody that comes here with all your heart. Don't give people attitude. People will be greeting you and you'll be looking at the other place. You throw away your eyes and do as if they are no human being. How will you want the person to stay? It's our kindness, our love that could make people to stay in this church. If we don't treat people 
as valued, they're not going to stay. Nobody goes to where he's not valued. Nobody goes to where she's not valued. You need to let people know they're welcome. You need to make people know that they're part of us. After all, this church is not for any particular person. You need to let people know that. You need to be welcoming. The people, you know, we human beings, we're spirits. So whatever you are doing, the person can perceive it. When you welcome person, the person will perceive it. When you don't welcome it, the person will perceive it. Praise the Lord. So we, we need to change our attitude in this church. You need to make up your mind that everybody I see is valued. You need to value everybody in this church. You can't show kindness to anybody that you do not value. You can't show love to somebody that you do not value. If somebody do not value you, why will you listen to him? Praise the Lord. If you don't value somebody, you take it as a waste of time listening to the person. Isn't it? You feel it's disturbing me. And the person knows when you're feeling, I'm disturbed. He knows that. That's not what God has called us. That's not the life God has called us to live. God has called us to value everyone. For your information, there's nobody that God created that does not have a value. There's nobody that God created that does not have good things in them. Although there might be some bad things you might see. But that bad thing is not their total definition. Do you know what God does? God focuses on the good thing in our lives. He doesn't focus on the bad things. And we are children of God. Focus on everybody's good thing. Anybody you see, focus on any good thing in that person's life. The person might have nine bad things, but just one good thing. Focus on that one. Praise the Lord. Find something that is good. If you could not find something that is good, then there's a problem with you. Praise the Lord. If you could not find anything that is good in somebody, I want you to know there's a problem with you because there's nobody God created without any good quality in that person. So if you could not find it, then there's a problem. Everybody God created, there's a good quality somewhere. It's our effort to find it. Acknowledge it. Value them. Start on a good note with anybody. It doesn't mean that you will not be hurt. If you're hurt, discuss it. Don't, because you're hurt, you block everybody. You block the person. If you're hurt, discuss it. You're hurt because you're a human being. You're hurt because you interact with human beings. And we human beings, we're not perfect. The only person that will not hurt you is God. Even though some people feel that God has hurt them. But we are not of that class that say God has hurt us. God is good to us. Praise the Lord. So, find good things to say about somebody. Value everybody in the church. Value everyone. This is the culture we want to establish here. This is the culture we want to establish here. Let it not be said, let it not be known that you are showing bad attitude to somebody. Let it not be said, let it not be known that you are relegating somebody to the ground, somebody that Jesus died for. You're relegating the person as if it's nothing. 
that person you are doing that thing, do you know if that is the only person in this world, Jesus will say, come and die for that person. That person, God value him. God value her. If you are a child of God, you value what God values. If you are not a child of God, then you will not value what God values. But you need to love God first. Shall we just rise up? First, I want you to talk to God and tell God to help you to love Him. That's where it starts. It's not a transactional relationship that God is looking for. I'm coming to get this, get that, get that. No. God is looking for a loving relationship, not a transactional relationship. God, give me this, then I'll, I'll do this. No. Transactional relationship. I want you to pray and say, God, help me to build a loving relationship with you, not a transactional relationship with you, not a relationship that I want this, I want that, I want that, I want that. No. It's a relationship that you, you'll be asking God, God, what can I do? I want to do something to you. I want to do something for you just to show you that I love you. Show me what to do to show you that I love you. When you come to that state, all your prayers are answered. When you come to the state that you are constantly wanting to prove to God that you love Him, you don't have problem. Your prayers will be answered. But when it is only God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, your prayer will even be very short. Because when you finish drawing out your list, your prayer will end. Not give me, give me, but Lord, how can I show you that I love you? Lord, I love you. Show me how to show you that I love you. I want you to talk to God. Genesis 4, verse 4, say God respects Abel. He respects Abel first and then his offering. So for God to accept us, our offerings, our substance, we need to love him. So Father, help me give up. There's been a lot of mixed doctrines out there. A lot of jamborees. Making people to lose focus on the main thing. And the main is essence is for us to love God because that's why we have been created to love and to worship Him. Say, Lord, help me, Lord, bring me back to you. I don't know if there is anyone there that you just want to, you know, reconcile back to God this morning. Say, Father, help me as I come back to you. Accept me, Lord God. Is there every, any way that I've not shown love, that I've not loved you with my heart, that your love doesn't matter to me, that the things that you love doesn't matter to me. Lord, help me, King of Glory, as I come back to you. Accept me, Lord God, as I come back to you. Accept me, Lord God, as I come back to you, Lord God. I want to love you afresh. We're talking about agape love, true love of God. We're not talking about love that's transactional. Help me, Lord God, to love you in this season, especially in this end time. Help us, Lord. Joshua says, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Serving the Lord, loving the Lord, giving our totality to him because the Bible says, he first loved us. Go first John 4, 9. Say, God first loved us. So we have no reason for not to love him. 
Father, help us, Lord God, to love you in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. One prayer as before we take our offering. You will say, Father, Father, as the year is coming to an end, as the year is coming let your divine end. protection be over my life and over my family. Let your I want you to pray this prayer deeply from the depth of your heart. Because a lot of things are happening now. A lot of things that are not pleasant. But by the grace of God, it will not come near your domain. The Bible says, when I say the blood, I will pass over. Say, Father, as the year is coming to an end, let your power, let your presence, let your angels begin to keep watch over me and my family. He said, we will keep watch over us, even though we walk through the shadow of darkness. Say, Father, keep watch over me. Keep watch over my children. Keep watch over my family, Lord God. I pray for your divine protection. That myself and my family will see the end of this year, Lord God, and the new year and more years in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, show me your mercy, Lord, as the kingdom of darkness is going around. The Bible says the, the devil kills, steals, destroy. They will not come near me. They will not come near my family. They will not come near anything that concerned me. Say, Father, Lord, let your protection be over my family in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lift up your two hands to the King of glory and say, Father, now and, the, and for the end of the year, let me receive good news. Only good news. Only good news. Only good news. Now begin to lift up your prayer points to the King of glory. Now to the end of the year, King of glory, only good news. Only good news. Only good news. Only good news. Victorious news shall be my portion in the name of Jesus. The ancient of days, the unchangeable changer that I select prayers on this man, say, Lord God. We say, King of glory, good news shall be our portion, Lord God. Good news both home and abroad, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Good news, Lord God. Good news, Lord God. Good news, Lord God. Good news, Lord God. Because we're going to be giving our testimony, Lord God, to your glorious name. Just begin to bless the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord God. We thank you. In Jesus' name mighty name we have prayed I, I, we want a victorious amen in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen uh, you need a better amen the king of glory has kept you this is November in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen I want you to bring out your substance your tithes your offerings your vows and your pledges and lift them up to the king of glory thank you very much worship team hallelujah you are God, you are not just me, you are not just my joke, you are a great God, you are God. Shake, I shake like a winner, my boy. When you see me shake, I shake. 
bless you this morning. We pray King of glory that you accept us and accept our offerings. Let it be used for the expansion of your kingdom Lord God on this earth and the demolition of the kingdom of darkness. Cause every devourer for our sake. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. May we be seated please. Just quick announcement before I call the pastor. By the grace of God there is going to be a special program on the 25th of this month. I want to encourage us to come um, we're having the Assistant Continental Overseer and the person of Pastor Ipukun Williams coming all the way from Victoria to bless us. And there's going to be special anointing for the children and for youths, anointing for exploits. Please come. It's going to be a wonderful time. It's a province program. So all the other parishes are also coming too. It's a Friday. It's 7 p.m. It's a Friday, 7 p.m. Try and make our time. I think by his grace, by half past nine, we should be. 9 o'clock or past 9, we should be out of here. Please come and the Lord will bless each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget our prayers for the, in the weeks. We have Mount Zion. Mount Zion, our, we do a little bit of teaching there. We pray. It's very important. It's, very, it's a very wonderful time on Fridays. And every last Friday of the month is Holy Communion. Every Saturday between the hours of 10 p.m. and 12 a.m., we have prayers. Just in the comfort of your home. You can log, log in or connect with us on Zoom. And every last Wednesday of the month, by His grace, we have our sisters prevailing prayer. It's a wonderful time. Sisters, we meet on Zoom, share together, and we pray. The Lord bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, please. But oh, we have our little Joshua that is going to be one. That's Brother Peter's uh, son. He's invited the old church for the for the pa- for the birthday party. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Peter, you want the whole church to come for the party? Prepare, huh? Okay. We heard it from the horse's mouth. <laughs> Okay. Um, My prayer is that beginning from now onwards, everything you will do for the Lord will be because you love him. That's where the reward is. Everything you do will be that you love him, that you just want to prove to him Lord, I want to prove to you that I love you. You know, let it be what is in your heart. Or that is the first commandment. Once you obey that one, everything will follow. I want us to rise up. I want you to ask God again. God, give me the strength to show you that I love you. Help me to show you that I love you. Help me to spread your love to my fellow brethren. Lord, help me to spread your love and kindness to my fellow brethren. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance unto you and give you peace. May the name of the Lord never cease in your lineage. May he bless you and bless everyone after you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. As you go this week, you will meet testimonies. You will come back with mighty testimonies. 
May the Lord answer all your prayers. All that concerns you, may the Lord take care of them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Um, okay. Before we go, I think we, there are people that are new for the first time. Let, let's sit down. We will welcome them in the Light Pavilion way. Those that are coming for the very first time, can we just lift up your hand? That, can you stand up so that they show you the Light Pavilion love? Please, can we welcome them? Welcome them and let them know that you want them to stay. For these people, we will not give them any attitude. We will not give them attitude. We will show them that we love them, we will show them we value them, and we will care for them. I will share the grace. Okay, so may the Lord help, may the Lord go with you as you go in Jesus' name. God bless you, sir.